And went, oh, actually, and that's why we need contact. Yeah, I wouldn't pet this right? dog. <laughs> no. This no. looks like Target locked in Lily's, you know, funny. Little <laughs> I don't know if that Target is a hot dog or my right. face, but I, yeah. But, oh. yeah. Mouth closed. Pretty yeah. yeah. Focused. Like, yeah. yeah, it's a bit. Yeah, you yeah. see the mouth. You can see like the, the slight tension, the muzzle and the, the skin there as well. And um, like the few bit of wrinkles in the fore, like on the forehead um, and like the eyes are white. You see more white Oops. in the eyes as well than you see in the other pictures with the other dogs. Um, so there's yeah. definitely a few different things here going on that you might want to look at more. Mm -hmm. And the, and the ears don't seem to be sort of appetitive ears. Like I want something that's in front of me. It's like a little bit avoidant. And Sharg, you're reminding me that many, many years ago, one of my first aggression cases, I could not figure out what the precursor to that golden retriever biting children. I mean, it was whiskers up. And so whisker oh, movement wow. ever yeah. since that case became important to me in yeah. retrospect, of course, pilo erection could be whiskers. It just never crossed my mind oh. that that was a place to look. And so I don't know this dog, but those whiskers don't seem really sort of reliable. Mm. That's um, true. Wow, great. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jenny Ness in the chat suggests that um, there's also a bright light, could be a bright light as well, creating the tiny pupils. So, you know, but then she also says she wouldn't pet that dog either. So um, <laughs> I think we're all in agreement with that one. Yeah, it's usually the big pupils that are more dangerous, right? So I, I see that as a scared dog when you can see the reflection, yeah. as, as Kathy was saying. So and I think the cool, pupils cool. are sort of like, well, maybe yeah. it's okay, but yeah. But yeah. And the cool thing here is I think I love hearing Kathy's example of the, the whiskers because you, you look at different species, like a sea lion, you go, whiskers give you so much information with a dog. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily look at whiskers as much, I think. And I think, but actually hearing Kathy's example, and you start going, oh, I didn't know there was a relevance to look at the whiskers. Now we start being more of it, like, or, like orienting to them more and we don't need to create a story around them. We don't have to go whiskers equals bad dog or aggressive dog or sad dog, but we just like noticing these things sure. as we're going through. Um, hopefully there might be people go, who are sitting there going, I never thought you could see a change in this. So you look at the whisker direction and so hopefully that just starts opening up our repertoire of what's available to us after this session. One of my favorite books on my shelf, I'm not in my office right now, but is um, The Wolf Ethogram done at Wolf Park. This is an old book. So it's Monty Sloan's photograph of wolves and then a description. So it's an ethogram of the wolves at Wolf Park. And one of my favorite, and they use it for coding behaviors, for doing ethograms. So one of my favorite behaviors out of that sort of dictionary of things wolves do is lumpy whisker bed. Lumpy whisker bed. And I went, oh, it's the goosebumps on a dog or wolf's face under, like I then saw oh. it, it was always there, lumpy whisker bed, goosebumps on the whiskers. It was just like, wow, I couldn't see it now. So Lily's work as well, once you sort of bring attention to it, you're like, duh, it's been there all the time. And yeah. I just love that I yeah. got to say lumpy whisker bed. <laughs> <laughs> so like, like hid, hidden in plain sight. But yeah, like, I think that fits nicely with the idea that um, like looking at, we talked to uh, like different species there slightly as well, but I think that's relevant, really relevant actually, because if I'm a client or I'm just looking at my dog or I'm looking at a photo, we start relating to cues that go, oh, I used to have a Labrador, I used to have this. Whereas we take Lily's book and the illustration or you take a different species and you're talk still talking about eyes and changes in eyes or whiskers or um, in Lily's description, like you look at the, her uh, graphic and you go, um, I'm focusing the ears. It doesn't become more so. You might go, oh, I had a dog with patches over the eyes, but hopefully you, you can like laser in and focus a bit more on the changes in that body and what to look for oh, right. oh. <laughs> e. whiskers, right so work with the walrus you'll pay attention to whiskers right the only photo exactly. in this room is my et yeah. And I think we should like we should get people to go um, like I think it's good to go. Let's look at like Lily's work here as opposed to just go to a picture straight away, because then you can be a bit more objective and go this is what I'm looking for. But then also don't be scared to go um, with a client take a completely different animal and go, what would you look for? Because um, that might be like a, 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 an SD a, it becomes a cue for them later on going, oh yeah, with the trainer, we looked at a cat. I don't know why we looked at a cat because I don't have one, but I learned that you could look at the whiskers, you could look at the ears, the eyes, and then they start using that more with their dog. And I think that's another tool just for consulting and uh, purposes. I think it's useful for people to have. 
especially when it's a body part we don't really have in the same functional way. Like, I guess we could say we have whiskers, but not, do you know what I'm saying? Like, we don't pay attention to whiskers. We don't have whiskers. So, yeah. <laughs> More attention. Exactly. I'm going to get my partner to start paying attention to his whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> I need a magnifying glass. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Lily Chin. I'm the author and artist of Doggy Language Book, which was published in October 2020, that's last year, by Summersdale Publishers. There is going to be an online Zoom event, which is also a book panel discussion about Doggy Language Book. Um, this discussion is going to be presented by Grisha Stewart, who's also the host of this webinar and the owner of Grisha Stewart School. Grisha is um, a friend and dog trainer. She is the author of Behavior Adjustment Training, the Bat Book, which you may know about. It's famous in the world of training for dogs with fear, frustration, and aggression. I had the honor of illustrating this book. Um, there's also Kathy Sadeo, who's an amazing speaker. I've seen her speak at a few different clicker expos. Um, she's an applied animal behaviorist and has trained lots of different animal species. She's also the author of Plenty in Life is Free, which is an amazing book. It's a really wonderful book for dog lovers. I highly recommend it. Uh, Chirag Patel is based in the UK. He is also an applied animal behaviorist and a bit of a superstar in the world of humane animal training. He has hosted a few BBC TV shows. Um, so this is a world-class event. Um, I have no idea which pages in this book are going to be discussed. I don't know which poses are going to be looked at, um, but there will be dog videos. We'll be seeing dogs moving instead of static images, and these three dog behavior experts will be discussing what we see on screen. I really hope you will join us. If you can't make it, if you can't sit through the, the entire live event, you can always come back to it later because it will be recorded. I hope to see you there. Grisha Stewart, Kathy Sadeo, Lily Chin, and myself are going to be doing a panel on doggy body language. Just some amazing, amazing experience, fabulous trainers and behaviorists to spend time with and to talk about body language. And so we're going to use Lily Chin's new book, Doggy Language, as a reference point. And we're going to refer to it. We're going to talk about some of the illustrations, talk about some of the behaviors that she's highlighted. And so Grisha, Kathy and myself have gone through the book, selected some of the pages that we found really interested. And we're going to talk interesting. And we're going to talk about body language. You're going to hear our perspectives on body language. Um, how do we use it? What do we agree with? What do we disagree with? What do we think um, you can look at differently? And all of us are probably going to have a lot of similarities in the way we approach body language. But I'm sure there'll be some really cool nuanced differences and also learning opportunities to go, oh, that's amazing. Um, I know when I've heard Kathy and Grisha speak before, um, there's always something to learn. So I'm very excited about this. We get to discuss and talk. And yeah, Lily's going to join us for that. Mega excited. Not join us. It's going to be amazing. Can't wait. Bye. Where's Nemo? Nemo. Nemo, Nemo, where are you? Or maybe I need to reinforce that behavior a little bit more and he'll come back to me. Hi, Kathy Sadeo here. Um, it is not very often that a dog training or behavior book comes out. And I think to myself, I need about 20 more copies of that book so I can keep it in the trunk of my car. So I can hand out a copy to clients and colleagues and random people on the street. Uh, Lily Chin's new book, uh, Doggy Language, is one of those. It's not only incredibly visually appealing, as you know, if you've ever seen uh, Lily's artwork, um, but it's incredibly informative, science-based, accurate, helpful information about dog body language. Um, just earlier this week, I was working with a friend and client, Sue, and she happened to send me this beautiful photo, let's see if I can get it on here, of adoption day for her amazing dog, Tut. And Sue's beaming face is there, but you can also take a look at Tut and see Hmm. There's a little bit of tension there as she's holding him up for the photo. Uh, his ears are back. His mouth is tight. There's a furrow between his eyes. His eyes have some tension at the top. We can read 
even though it's a still photo, some of the tension in Todd's body. And of course, Sue is aware of that. I just find this photo appealing. And then you kind of go to Lily's book and you think, is that information in there? Oh yeah, on various pages. But you get this really brief description of what does a tight mouth look like and what might that mean? So I'm incredibly excited that I get to participate in a webinar Next. with two of my incredible colleagues, uh, Grisha Stewart and Sharad Patel. And we're gonna be discussing Lily's new book and we'll have some videos and photos and be discussing that in the context of this new book. So I'm really hoping you'll consider joining us. Thanks.